Hello there, bye. This is General Snivy, and welcome back to more of the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Activision presents. Yes, you did. Just in time, Jamar. Just in past. time. Developed by vicarious visions. It's Crash Bandicoot. Welcome everyone back to more of the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy! In the last play session we played through and completed Crash Bandicoot 1, the first of three games in this entire collection. So that was freaking sweet. We were able to finish the first game within one play session, which is absolute batshit insanity. And so because it took so little time to complete, we're going to be jumping straight into the next game in the collection, which is... It's Crash Bandicoot 2! Cortex Strikes Back! So, here we go. It's time for Crash Bandicoot 2! Cortex Strikes Back! And I'm pretty sure the graphic settings are going to be the exact same as they were before. And they're basically shared between all three games, so whatever you set the graphics to be here will be applied to all three games. So, if you have them set to Ultra, then they'll be on Ultra on all three Crash Bandicoot games. Same with the uh, low settings, uh, medium settings, etc, etc. So, now that's out the way, let's begin Crash Bandicoot 2. Cortex Strikes Back. <laughs> Press Start. To begin. Situation? If we don't have any friends left on the surface. Thank you so much for the host, Jamar. Highly appreciate it. An enemy. Crash, crash, dad! My battery is fried. Make yourself useful, big brother, and bring an extra battery for me. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Anyway, welcome to Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. Much like the original game, the controls are the exact same, however we do have access to additional moves. So if you happen to hold the B button or the right bumper on Xbox, you can perform a slide. Sliding around is basically your fastest way of maneuvering your way through the entire game. Combine the slide along with the ability, along with jumping, and you'll be able to make some really great distances and cross some large chasms. Though, they're not as large as you may expect, so this is something to keep in mind as you're going about through the entire adventure. Well, well, well. 
If it isn't Crash Bandicoot, welcome. I apologize for the crude means used to bring you here, but I'd rather expect a written invitation would have been turned down. I need your help. Surrounding you are a series of five doors. Through each door lies a well-hidden crystal. The crystals look like this. Bring me the crystals, Crash. That is all I will say for now. We will speak again. Hmm. Something doesn't seem right about this whole ordeal. But anyway, welcome to the main hub of Crash Bandicoot 2. As you can see, there are five separate doors, each leading to a different level. So technically, we can play any level in any order we see fit. And our primary objective is to go about the entire stage and collect the crystals that are hidden within them. Most of the time, they are hidden in plain sight, like out in the open. Like literally, you just go up about it and grab it, no problem. And as you can see, there's, uh, a, of course, the clear gems that we can grab as well for busting open every single box in the stage. However, you may notice there's a, another gem icon underneath of the crystal. Well, in some stages, there are actually colored gems hidden within each of these stages. Well, it's hidden within certain stages anyway, and not all levels have the additional crystal. So that is something to keep in mind. However, for each of these uh, colored crystals, they have to be approached in a certain way. And the first example I will uh, go ahead and showcase is here in Turtle Woods, and that is with the blue gem. So, let's go ahead, save some, save our progress here, and get the party started. By the way, I have not mentioned this yet, but it is possible to skip the introduction level by simply skipping the introduction cutscene, and upon skipping it, you'll just jump straight into the warp room. So you don't need to play the introduction stage at all. So anyway, just like before, we just gotta go through the stage and bust open every single box in the entire stage in order to get a clear gem. And we also have to keep a lookout for the crystals as well throughout the stage. One thing I will definitely say is that unlike the first Crash Bandicoot game where I was able to complete that relatively quickly, this game is going to take a lot longer to complete. How much longer exactly? I'm not 100% sure. But I do know it's going to take some time. So along with the slide jump and crouching, you also have access to one more move that involves pushing the crouch button, and that is jumping into the air and then hit the button. Doing this will initiate a belly flop. You will need this move in order to bust through certain obstacles and destroy certain boxes, which we will encounter later on in the game. And as you can see here, the enemy variety has definitely changed quite a bit. So now we not only are fighting regular turtles, the turtles are now filled with like spikes and later on we'll be encountering ones with chainsaws on their shells. Hmm. I'm guessing Cortex really has uh, really gone overboard as far as genetic mutation is concerned. Anyway, there's a new box type right down there, right down below as you can see. Those are nitro crates. Do not touch them because even breathing on them the wrong way will cause you to die. <laughs> and trust me, no one wants a sweet helping of death like that. <laughs> Dang it. By the way, this whole underground area is optional, but you do need to go down here in order to bust open all the boxes that are down here. So, one other thing you may be wondering now, and that is... If we need to bust open all the boxes, what about the nitro crates? Do they count as boxes as well? Well, yes they do. And the thing is with nitro crates is that at a certain point in the stage, you'll find a special uh, green box with an exclamation point on it. Spin into that box and that will detonate all the nitro crates in the entire stage. 
anyway, on to this part. Oh, how, how I hate this part. That is almost frame-perfect timing right there. You have to slide jump onto the ostrich and then do another slide jump immediately after upon landing. So that way you can cross the gap and then land onto those platforms above here. Because if you try to do another high jump up here to these platforms, it's not going to work. It's honestly not going to work at all. And god damn it, I completely screwed that up. Alright, let's go ahead and try this again. The rules are basically the same as before within the first Crash game. It's just, uh, with the original release, the controls are much improved. But with the Insane Trilogy adopting the control scheme of Crash 3, also that was just plain stupidity right there. <laughs> Since all three Crash 3 games in the uh, End Saint Trilogy have adopted the Crash 3 control scheme, they're all universal across all three games, so all three of them are now consistent with one another. That can be considered both good and bad depending on who you ask. Also, jumping across those ostriches is a lot harder than it looks. It honestly is. Alright, see this uh, green exclamation box here? Spin into it, and there we go. All the nitro crates in the stage have been completely annihilated. And once you hit the crate, it, uh, it stays as a steel crate. Steel crates cannot be destroyed, but they don't count towards your box totals. So that is something to keep in mind. By the way, you do not want to... You don't want to fall in... No. You do not want to spin into a turtle with spikes on the sides of its shell or slide into it. Doing so will ultimately kill you. And that's not something you really want to do. Yeah, that's true. You did tell me that. I believe that the fastest way of moving throughout the entire game here in Crash 2 is to combine the slide as well as spinning upon uh, reaching the furthest distance. By the way, it's possible to completely skip those skirmishes. Also, that was bullcrap. Well, this isn't good. Still managed to get the box somehow. You kind of need that turtle in order to in order to get that crate on the very top there. Anyway, as you can see, first crystal. Okay, that was unexpected. <laughs> but that totally works. And since we gotten all the boxes, we also got our hands on the clear gem. There we are. Stage is now completed. Mostly. However, there is still the matter of getting the color gem here, which we can get right now. Other colored gems that we may encounter are not going to be nearly as easy to get. So let's go ahead and cash in our collectibles and see something special. And that was the Crash Dance, folks. Well done, Crash. I knew I could rely on you. Now listen carefully. These holograms are hard to maintain. During the course of my intellectual pursuits, I have stumbled across a force that threatens to destroy the world. 
The crystals are the only means of containing it. The fate of the world is at stake. It is imperative, therefore, that you bring them to me. Are you there, Crash? 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 Are you there, Crash? Are you there, Crash? <sighs> hmm. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Seems that Coco was trying to communicate with us. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, she's not going to be able to do so for quite some time. There is one other thing I haven't mentioned yet, and that is... If I look any different today, that is because I recently made a pretty major investment in my streaming setup. And that is, I recently bought myself a camcorder and the Elgato cam link, along with a couple of other things that... I need in order to get this setup up and running in order to make myself and my face cam look more professional looking. So, if I look nicer, that's the reason. I bought myself a camcorder and hooked it up to the Elgato cam link. And I'm using the uh, camcorder as a webcam. And the camcorder I went with is the GoPro Hero 6. And the reason why I went with that is because I heard it has really great reviews. It looks great for being a small little itty bitty camcorder. And I also read that this is a compatible webcam on Elgato's website with the Elgato cam link. So that's the whole reason why I bought it in the first place. So anyway, let's head back into Turtle Woods and grab the missing blue gem. Also, you may have noticed here as well, along with the uh, Crash 1 Insane Edition, along with this game and the entire Insane Trilogy, there are now uh, first, second, and third place positions. So in other words, a time trial is now available and we can choose to take that on if we desire. So, if you want to take on a time trial, I would recommend not doing this until the after you finish the game, unless you're a speedrunner and know exactly how to perform the slide spin combo absolutely perfectly throughout the entire uh, run of the level. Hmm. Um, no, I'm actually going to be using the camcorder alongside my green screen. Best of all, with the camcorder, I don't need to adjust any sort of settings whatsoever beforehand in order to make the green screen work properly. It just works right out of the box. No problem. <laughs> all right, let's head back into Turtle Woods and grab the blue gem. Now, in order to grab the blue gem for this level in particular, as the hint suggests, be kind to boxes in order to be awarded a special gem. What that means? Don't break any boxes at all. If you break a single box throughout the entire stage, you will have to leave and start all over again. That includes checkpoint boxes. So, if you can, try to avoid spinning into enemies. Instead, just jump on them, if you possibly can. Sometimes spinning into enemies is your only way of uh, getting through the stage. Dang it. That was not supposed to happen. It is possible to get through that particular opening without breaking a single box. Though it is difficult to do, but if you can manage to pull it off, you will be greatly rewarded. <laughs> well, Crash, <laughs> know this. As long as you are allied with Cortex, you are my sworn enemy, and I will do anything in my power to stop you. <laughs> if the fate of the world is truly your concern, you must be gather the gems, not the crystals. If you obtain all 42 gems, I can use them to... Focus a laser! Ah, yes, a laser beam that will 
destroy Cortex and the space station he has created. Until then, I must use my forces to stop you from gathering crystals. <laughs> Alrighty, sure thing. Also, Embryo has something against Cortex. And I honestly don't blame him at all for feeling the way he does. <laughs> well, we kind of kicked his ass after he turned himself into the Incredible Hulk. But even so, despite this uh, feeling of uh, bitterness... He still wants to help us out a bit, but in order for him to help us out, we need to gather the gems instead of crystals. Ah, excuse me. However, even if we uh, do collect the gems instead of crystals, we still cannot progress through the game unless we collect the crystals. So even if we just collect uh, gems instead of crystals, we still would not be able to go anywhere. So we kind of have to do uh, double duty. Also, screw you, game. Screw you. Same spot, too. The same freaking spot. Also, we have a new follower. I've forgotten to mention this before, but it's uh, XSonic52IX. In other words, uh, 52.9 in Roman numerals, if I'm reading that right. Anyway, if you are here right now, if you're here right now, uh, thank you so much for the follow from the last stream. Sorry I didn't read it before because I, uh, for whatever reason, Streamlabs was not working for me. And it didn't notify me of any happening whatsoever until... Until after the fact. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, that is pretty interesting that the the bio, like at the very end of Crash 1, says something about the embryo doing something with his life. But in this game, uh, no. <laughs> that kind of, uh, kind of threw that out the window. Probably because the uh, alternate ending that you can get in Crash 1 is not canon. I know it's possible to cross this gap without having to fight these moles. Speedrunners do that all the time, so that way they can bypass the entire arena. But it seems like uh, with the adjustment of the physics engine, you don't bounce nearly as far. And there we go. Stage completed and blue gem acquired. And that, as they say, is that. Finally, the level is done. <laughs> oh, man. That was interesting, to say the least. And that was only the first level, folks. That was only level one. Like I said, you can complete any of these levels in any order you see fit. So, for example, if I just wanted to go straight to, say, Hang 8, I can do that. And you know what? Let's do it. Let's go to Hang 8 next. Instead of heading into Snowgo, which is technically level 2. And my webcam froze. Shoot. Okay, hang on, folks. I need to fix something real quick. Uh... Well... Where's the cam link? Cam link. Here you are. Deactivate and activate. All right. There we go. Not sure why my webcam just completely froze there, but 
Anywho, crisis averted for now. Although the game is in windowed mode now, so. <laughs> Alright. I'm probably going to have to restart the game in order to get back up into full screen again. Or I'm going to have to just simply return to the main menu. It's going to be one of those things. Let's try this. There we go. Full screen restored. Heck, I didn't even need to re-enter re the level in the first place. Or just, uh... <laughs> oh, I don't know. I didn't have to... Do something stupid. God damn it. What the hell is going on with the damn cam link? <sighs> Hang on. Uh, properties. Okay. Hmm. I could have swore I've read online on Twitter recently that, uh, Elgato was saying that, uh, there was a driver conflict with, uh, most recent NVIDIA graphics card update. So that may be a cause for concern. Maybe that's what's screwing up the cam link. But for whatever reason, it was uh, not really doing much of anything within uh, with the first level. But here, oh boy. This is the only level that's causing the cam link to freak out. Also, as you can see, with this particular level, there is an additional gem that we can get. However, we need to be quick. We need to be absolutely quick about this. As soon as you reach the first section, you need to, uh... As soon as you reach the first, uh, boarding section, a timer will start counting down. If the timer runs out, then you miss out on that additional gem that you can get here. So essentially, you need to perform a speed run, a speed run of the stage, and go through it within a uh, allowed time. And there we go. Second gem has been collected, and the crystal has been collected too. Now let's see if the webcam will freeze again. Okay, good. It didn't freeze this time, but upon re-entering Hang 8, I'm pretty sure it's going to freeze again. And if it does, well then, that kind of sucks. Alright, let's go. Let's see if it'll freeze this time. Okay, good. It didn't freeze. Wow. <laughs> Who knew? Am I right? <laughs> God damn it. Overshot. Overshot the gap. Okay. So at this point now... Since we collected the second gem in this stage to complete the uh, speed run, we don't need to worry about having to complete the entire stage within the time limit anymore. At least until I show off the time trial, that is. In which case, the time trial will definitely make things interesting. And as you can see throughout the different stages here, we also have these bonus platforms. These will take you to the bonus stage now, and just like with the bonus stages in the first game, having to fail a bonus stage doesn't cost you any lives in the Insane Trilogy, and it also 
doesn't count against you whatsoever if you happen to fail it at all. So, feel free to retry bonus stages as many times as you would like. Uh, Crash Dance? Uh, don't you mean Crash Bash? And if, to answer your question, um, yeah, I will stream, uh, the, I will be streaming, uh, Crash Team Racing sometime in the near future. As far as when, not too sure. Also, there is a hidden path here in which you are required to get the blue gem in order to get here. If you, uh, don't have the blue gem, then this part would be inaccessible to you. I believe if you go through here, you'll, uh, you'll be able to get some additional goodies. However, this is a hard path, as you can see here. There's a lot that can go wrong in such a short period of time. And as you can see, there are all kinds of different boxes here. And I do believe you do need to hit these things in order to uh, get them to count towards your box total. And there is a lot of boxes in this stage. By the way, as you can see, there are these uh, ramps you can jump off of. Hit the acceleration button upon hitting the ramps to gain some extra height to bust through some of these boxes that are hanging really, really high in the air. There we go. we go, folks. That takes care of that path. For now, anyway. Just gotta get through here. And good. We made it to the next checkpoint. By the way, if you happen to die after completing one of those gem paths, you will have to go through it again in order to add those boxes back to your total. And just like with Crash 1 in the End Sane Trilogy, if you uh, happen to mess up too many times, then a new checkpoint box will be made within a certain point in the stage. So... Crash Dance is for the GameCube. Oh, I never even heard of that game, so no wonder. <laughs> no wonder I haven't heard of Crash Dance. Maybe it was a Japanese exclusive game. I'm not too sure. Eh, either way, I don't have the game, so I can't really stream that particular game. I'll definitely look that up later, though, for sure. For now, let's go ahead and uh, save over this and head into another level. Let's do Crash Dash. I feel like going for a quick dash if my webcam doesn't freeze again. By webcam, I mean camcorder. There we go. Everything's fine here. And just like with the other boulder levels from uh, Crash 1, if you happen to have any uh, Aku Aku masks with you, they are taken away from you upon entering the stage. Also, we have some new obstacles here. Other than the boulders themselves, we also have these mines. If you happen to hit a mine, you won't die, but you will lose some precious time and we also have those electrical gates there. Run into them and you will die. But other than that, that's basically the obstacles for this, these uh, boulder sections in uh, Crash 2. But for the most part, you can just outrun them on foot without much of an issue. However, there are going to be instances where you will have to... There are going to be instances where you will have to do some multitasking, including sliding and jumping. Alright. That's done. 
On to the next bonus stage. Looks like you uh, sent me a message, Jamar. Okay. I will have to read that Facebook message later. Probably after the stream. But, from what I can see, it looks like an additional guest will be joining us tonight. For our little smash thing. Either way, the more the merrier. Also, you may have noticed there are some, uh, what look to be boost panels. While those panels, if you run over them, you will gain a, a small speed boost. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay. Stage is completed, got all the boxes, everything's hunky-dory here. Yeah, I was just saying that too. I'll be sure to read it after the stream is finished. Here we go. There's Crystal and the Gem. Three crystals. Not bad. I see you are getting the hang of it. I need to conserve power. I will communicate with you again after you retrieve the fifth crystal. Okay, sounds good to me. I mean, what was the point of that other than to say, hey, you're making some progress. Good job. Keep it up. <laughs> Perhaps that was the intent all along. Who knows? Anyway, the reason why I was moving my head like that is just to... Uh, prevent the uh, camling from freezing again. Anyway, on to the next level, Snow Go. And as you can see, this is the first snow level. We haven't had one of these in the first game. And with snow levels, they typically introduce what are known as ice physics. <laughs> Everyone's favorite physics engine, along with swimming controls. <laughs> and in the 90s, the uh, swimming controls, along with ice physics, were a platformer's worst nightmare. In the Insane Trilogy, the ice physics have been improved quite a bit, as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the original. How? I have no idea. I feel like he does rep reprise his role for the Insane Trilogy. Then again, I don't know. Maybe it's just the fact that his voice sounds more clear is what's throwing me off. Who knows? Also, as you can see right up there, there is the red crystal. Well, in the original, it is possible to perform a, a, a series of glitches to grab the red crystal early. But, in the Insane Trilogy, the Red Crystal has moved up quite a bit. Down, up a bit when it comes to that particular chasm. So, even if you try to perform the same maneuvers as before, you're not going to have nearly enough height to make it to the crystal. So, and by crystal, I mean gem. Hmm. But anyway... We will have to grab that gem via a different way. Yeah, that's kind of true. Cortex does have a bit of a tendency to help out Crash quite a bit. I'm not sure exactly how, but in a sense, he's kind of like Bowser from Super Mario. 
where occasionally he'll help out Mario every now and again. And sometimes he and Mario even work together in order to conquer a greater foe. This was seen in like uh, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. In another instance I can recall is definitely Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. But those were different circumstances altogether. Just saying though. Just saying that was a thing. I'm not sure, but I feel like this is going to be the first level where we won't be able to get all the boxes in. I could be wrong on that. But I'm pretty sure that is the case. A seal. I wonder if it's a navy seal. <laughs> Oh god, I'm terrible. Okay. There's a box that I clearly missed somewhere. I know it's those two outlying boxes. Ah, oh, god damn it. Oh yeah, there... That was also a thing where uh, Bowser also helped out in Super Paper Mario. Kinda forgot about that. Not sure how I forgot that, but eh. That was another instance where Bowser did help out Mario quite a bit. Throughout the entirety of the adventure, pretty much. Oh, I see what's going on here. There we go. <sighs> I'm surprised I even managed to hit that box from that steel spring. Also, random seal. <laughs> the strangest seals always seem to appear from underground somehow. By the way, even if you do pick up a crystal and you leave the stage via the pause screen, or if you get a game over, then that collection of the gem or crystal does not count. And so you would have to re-enter the level in order to grab it again. Just figure I'd throw that out there. By the way, you can skip the crash dance at any time by pushing the Y button or the equivalent triangle button or whatever it is on Nintendo Switch. So, if you are tired of seeing the crash dance, you can always skip it without a problem. And the crash dance only occurs after you collect a gem rather than a crystal. The crystal, you just proceed as if nothing ever happened. So I figure I'd throw it out there too. Alright, on to the next level. The pits. <laughs> this level is the pits, alright. And as the name implies, there are a lot of pits. A lot of bottomless pits here. So be sure to look out for pits and try to not fall into them. Because falling into them would be really bad. Another thing I've not mentioned is that... Of all three Crash games in the end scene trilogy that I've played... This, this one, along with Crash 3, I have not finished at all as of yet. Though I have played through uh, all of Crash Bandicoot 1. In fact, I played through all three games on the original PlayStation. I have not played through to completion the second or third game in the Insane Trilogy for, for some reason. Some reason. I don't know. Maybe the reason... Oh, God damn it. Maybe the reason why is because of the fact that I got too frustrated with Crash 2 due to the bad hit detection and random bullshit that the game had going on. Also, what the hell? 
Why can't I jump on that bird while still being able to move forward? Ugh, this game, I swear. Sometimes the hit detection can be really, really wonky. So when in doubt, just stop and just jump straight into the air. Jump now, don't be scared. By the way, in order to deal with the turtles with the chainsaws on their shells, you will have to slide into them or spin into them and get rid of them that way. Also, here is a very, very annoying quirk about this stage and several others that are like this that have forks in the road. You have to go back through the forks in order to get all the boxes that are within both halves in order to get the clear gem. There are several levels like this throughout the entire game, and that really, really sucks. Because the reason why it sucks so hard is due to the fact that the camera is very, very finicky. It does not work very well. And when backtracking, you kind of have to uh, pray to God that you don't run into anything or memorize the entire stage inside and out. And figure, yeah, I have to jump here. This is my visual cue to jump there. Then I have to do this. And then I have to do that. And there are a lot of times where you're proceeding backwards throughout the stage and then you run into shit because you don't see him until literally the last second. And a lot of times, the forks in the road, they don't have a split path. They don't have any checkpoints, so... If you happen to die on the additional path, you have to go back through... In order to get back to where you previously were. That is really, really annoying. But there we go. That's the fork. That's the fork mechanic in a nutshell. Super annoying, and I'm glad this was pretty much taken care of in Crash 3, where that is no longer an issue. Also, I don't remember those uh, birds being... Uh, cybernetically mutated in the original. I think they were more natural looking. Eh, probably just me. There we go. That took quite a while, but oh well, not exactly much that you can do. Also, we have a new crate type here. That is the steel... Crate, I guess it's not really steel it's more like uh, it's covered with steel reinforcement but it's still a regular box by the way you want to preserve these bouncing boxes until you hit this year otherwise you would have no way of getting back up this chasm god damn it and I ever shot the jump <laughs> God damn it. Whatever. It's fine. Oh, come on. Really? How did I slip off like that? By the way, there are certain crawl spaces that you will not be able to get through on, uh, on foot. So in order to get through them, you will have to perform a slide or either a slide or, yeah, you would uh, have to either slide through or crawl through. You can crawl by pushing and holding the right bumper or the crouch button also frick you. Uh, excuse me. Okay, let's not slip off, please. Thank you. Hey, 
Wayne, is that a news? Uh, there was one achievement here on Twitch that I've been trying to gun for for quite some time, and at the end of the last stream, I finally managed to get it, and that was the first tier of who is watching the Watchers achievement. So, what that means is that I am one step closer to being an affiliate, however, I need to keep this momentum going throughout the entire month of October. Which, uh, hopefully I will be able to do. Just gotta be able to maintain at least three viewers throughout uh, about 99% of the entire stream. In order to get it to count. And I also need to stream for a certain amount of time and uh, seven unique days. Which is pretty easy to do. It's just the maintaining viewers one is one that gives me a challenge. Okay, I was like, did I seriously miss a box somewhere? But no. <laughs> Thank God that was not the case. Alright, there we go. Level completed, finally. After what seemed like to be 10,000 years. You can get such a freaking crick in the neck. And there we go. The first five levels have been completed. And I do believe there was supposed to be another cutscene here, although I think I skipped it by mistake. But upon completing the first five levels, in the original game, in order to proceed over to the boss, you would stand in this middle platform here and ride this up to the next floor. However, with the Insane Trilogy, that has been changed. So the boss rooms, the bosses now have their own uh, individual rooms here. So in the Insane Trilogy, unlike the original, where you can only fight the bosses once and never fight them again, in the Insane Trilogy, you can choose to fight the bosses over and over again if you so desire. However, in order to progress, you do need to head into the boss and defeat them. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure there were. Also, say hello to Ripper Roo! <laughs> Remember this guy? Well, he's back. And he's jumping around like a freaking jackrabbit once again. Once again, his patterns are easy enough to memorize. You just need to wait for him to take himself out. So first off, he's going to lay down some TNT boxes or TNT tiles. And then we just start uh, bouncing around some uh, nitro box tiles. Stay away from those nitro box tiles and you should be fine. And it's basically the same sort of thing throughout the entire fight. And the patterns, I believe, are the exact same no matter what you're doing. And, uh, no matter what, the patterns are always the same. So it's pretty easy to memorize the patterns. One thing to keep in mind is that once he places down the final TNT crate or TNT tile on the floor here, they will go off as far as a, in a domino effect like fashion. But nitro crates, they work differently. They, they more or less go off in the another sort of domino-like effect, except the first one that goes off is always the one that Ripper Roo jumps on. So, there you go. Ripper Roo, very easy. The bosses in Crash 2 are very easy in both the original as well as the Insane Trilogy. And there we go. Now that that's done, we can now proceed onwards to the next floor. In the Insane Trilogy, you have to use the bumpers. But in the uh, Insane Trilogy, I mean, in the Insane Trilogy, you use the bumpers. Also, hello. <laughs> I see that Ripper Roo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. 
but back to business. There are crystals to be gathered, 20 to be exact. The planets will align shortly, all 13 of them, and this will create a power great enough to rip the Earth apart. Properly utilized, however, the crystals can absorb and contain the energy. Crash, is that you? I've been looking everywhere. I don't have much time to tell you this. You have to be careful. Trusting Cortex seems a little unwise, Crash. I can't keep the data path open much longer. Crash, you need to find... Hmm, I wonder what that's about. Also, speaking of Coco, she's also right here with her good old handy time machine. So, once again, Coco can join your adventure upon reaching the second floor in Crash 2. And unlike Crash 1, she can actually participate throughout the entire adventure if you let her. And I believe she can uh, fight any and all bosses. Also, say hello to the polar bear here. Ain't hey, cute. Just jump on. And again, and again, and again, and again. Doing this will score you several extra lives and an achievement to boot. However, you can only do this once per playthrough. After that, you won't be getting any more lives, no matter how, how many more times you jump on the polar bear. So, <laughs> just to limit your animal abusity, I guess. So, let's get down to business. Snow business, to be exact. Eh? Eh? Why does no one pay attention to Ouija? <laughs> okay, let's go. By the way, there is an achievement which, uh, Coco... Dang it. There is an achievement of which you can earn while playing as Coco, and that is spinning into a certain number of enemies. I believe the number is five. So, that's something to keep in mind. By the way, it doesn't have to be five enemies all in a row. You just have to spin into five of them, and you'll get an achievement or something to that extent. If it's not five, then it's probably a little bit more. Also, hello, hedgehog. I hate that hedgehog. They can only be killed via spinning into them after their spines have been uh, repelled. And uh, that's about it. You just need to wait for them to finish their little attack pattern. Yeah, me too. If you try to attack the hedgehog, whether you're sliding into them or spinning into them, if you happen to do that while their spines are up, then you will receive damage and or die. Also, ow. How did I live through that? Okay. Ow! <laughs> Dang it. If you want to go through these uh, ice slide sections more smoothly, one thing you can definitely do is just uh, simply let gravity do the work for you. So you don't have to do anything at all. Also, be aware that sometimes boxes can be hidden in the background. Also, you also have to deal with icicles too. Icicles will fall after you reach a certain point of their uh, point of contact. So be careful when running into them. If you happen to see an ice skull, just simply wait. Just wait for them to fall and then proceed. That way you don't end up hurting yourself or worse, dying because of stupid crap. Other than that, there's not really much to say about this stage in particular. But one thing to keep in mind is that the ice physics, despite them being adjusted for the better for the most part in this game, 
there's still a very annoying quirk when it comes to the ice physics here, and that is, if you're sliding on ice that's against a wall, you will maintain that momentum as soon as you push the jump button. So if you're sliding into a wall, you don't just stop dead in your tracks, no. You can actually build up some serious momentum by sliding into the wall over and over again and then fly off the Venus. Well, maybe not that far because there is a limit of how far you actually, actually go. But even so, even so, you will still be flying a great, great distance. And as you can see here, there, we missed a lot of boxes. There's 125 boxes in the stage, and then the only way to get them is that we need to get our hands on the red gem in order to take the path that leads up there. And unfortunately, we cannot get the red gem for quite some time. Alright. On to the next level after we save once again. Just to be sure everything's going to run nice and smoothly. On to Air Crash. Everyone loves to fly in the air and crash into the ground. Everyone does. <laughs> no. Also, as the hint suggests, there is an additional platform to be on the lookout for in the stage. And that is the death platform. If you take the death platform, you'll be taken to a hard course that you will need to complete. But upon completing the course, you will be awarded an additional gem. But one thing to keep in mind is that you need to stay alive until you reach the platform and take it. There's also a secret exit here. I'm going to try taking it now. Made it. Upon reaching that particular platform, this will take you out of the level and you'll be thrown into a new warp room that is rarely seen. Taking that secret exit will now open up a special portal leading back to Snowgo. And upon uh, taking this portal back to that level, you'll actually take on a brand new path. And upon completing the path, we will be awarded the red gem. So that will be sweet. But as you can see here, there are some additional portals here. In the original game, the original Crash Bandicoot 2, these portals do not appear at all. Instead, upon unlocking the secret exit for a particular level, in order to take an additional path, that uh, path's portal is the only one that appears. By the way, you will not be able to access this warp room ever again in the uh, original game upon entering the level until you take the secret exit again. But in the Insane Trilogy, in the Insane Trilogy, upon uh, reaching this platform here, you can choose to go up into the first warp room. So technically, this is the basement. So that is an excellent detail, and I love the fact that they added that additional detail here. But upon completing uh, this additional path in Snowgo, we should be able to... Uh, We should be able to get the red gem and make our leave relatively easily. However, this is not going to be an easy level to complete due to the fact that Snow Go, most of the level for the hard path here is going to be covered in ice. God damn it. Uh, well, that's annoying. <laughs> Also, just like with the original game, there is an achievement that you can get by simply spinning away an extra life. You can also do the same thing to Wumpa Fruit, but you won't be awarded any achievements for that. So that is something to keep in mind. Thankfully though, even if you do get a game over in this stage, 
nothing bad happens per se, at least not in uh, this version of the game. You would just simply have to redo this part of the stage or just this entire stage here all over again. Yeah, damn it. And as you can see, I wasn't sliding backwards right away like I should have upon uh, completing the slide. By the way, if you feel like you're going to be sliding a little bit too quickly towards danger in any sort of ice section whatsoever, just slide in the opposite direction. This will send you flying in the opposite direction, but it will uh, essentially stop your momentum and will help save yourself. Throughout many hard sections such as these, you will have to, uh... God damn it. Okay, slow down. Wait a second. You will have to take it easy. Taking it easy throughout these sections here is the best way of ensuring your survival, especially on icy slopes such as these. And there we go! The red gem is ours! However, we still need to complete the stage in order for it to count towards our total. So don't think you can just leave here without uh, any sort of consequences by simply hitting pause and, uh, Leave it. No. No, you still need to complete the stage. Okay. Why didn't the achievement pop up? Perhaps the reason why it didn't pop up is because of the fact that I did it in the bonus stage. And so the bonus stage doesn't really count. So I would have to do it here in the field. By the way, it's a really good idea to try the slide jump off of every single jump here. And the reason why I say this is so that way you can know for a dang fact that you will be able to make it across the gap without an issue. If you try to do it any other way, well, good luck. You may be able to make it, even if it was just barely, though it is highly likely that you're going to end up sliding off once again, just due to the fact that there's so many... Uh, sliding platforms that can uh, throw you right off. And there we go. Red gem is ours. By the way, there is one other thing that's worth mentioning, and that is whenever Cortex receive, decides to pop in and uh, make any sort of transmission with you whatsoever. Okay, that's fine. If you're back now, then welcome back. Anyway, as I was trying to say, if uh, at any time Cortex or even Coco try to communicate with Crash, Crash will immediately swap places with Coco, at least for the initial cutscene. Then afterwards, uh, Coco will take Crash's place without a problem. Alright, let's go ahead and try this level again. Now that we have the red gem, we should be able to access the one gem platform that we were previously unable to access now. So here we go. And here we are. Here's the red gem platform. Take this up and say hello to the checkpoint. 
Also, I have a feeling that uh, in order to bust through all the boxes here, what you have to do is... Maybe I'm thinking of a different level where the requirement is like that. Hmm. The differences between the TNT and Nitro crates is that uh, TNT boxes, you can safely jump on them and they will detonate after three seconds. But Nitro crates, upon touching them, or breathing on them the wrong way, <laughs> they will instantly go off and kill you, more than likely. Question, why did the TNT suddenly start going off right away? I clearly didn't touch it. Yet it acted like I did. What the hell is that about? Let's go ahead and try this again. There, there's another thing that's worth noting too, and that is Crash Bandicoot 2 is nefarious with having strangely difficult box requirements. And that is, if, if you don't do things a certain way upon reaching a certain point and certain pathways, you will not be able to get all the boxes in the entire stage, and so you would have to redo the entire thing all over again in order to get another chance. Oh, uh, that's why the TNT started going off. That is because of the fact that uh, when you happen to do a ground pound, it gives you some additional height but you will be falling straight to the ground upon uh, activating the uh, belly flop. Worth it. <laughs> By the way, getting up to 99 lives in this particular game is a pretty difficult task. Well, that didn't quite work. I was trying to spin away that one-up because I wanted to try to get that achievement of uh, doing that. But for whatever reason, uh, whatever reason, uh, it wouldn't let me. It wouldn't let me spin into it. Okay, what the hell was that, physics? <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. If you happen to spin into a Nitro Crate or TNT, you'll instantly die. And upon contacting uh, any... If you happen to contact or just touch a Nitro Crate, you will still die as if you, as if you spun into it. So that is something to keep in mind. <sighs> there is one other thing that's worth noting too, and that is in the original Crash Bandicoot 2, if you happen to touch or detonate a Nitro Crate box and die doing so, you will uh, get a unique death animation that was unique to that game alone. And that was Crash blowing into some sort of pipe as he just flies off into the sunset. Crap. But in this game, in this version of uh, Crash Bandicoot 2, that animation has been taken out for whatever reason. 
I believe it's taken out. But I know it, it appears a lot less frequently than it did before. Close. <sighs> you gotta love gauntlets like these where there are nitro crates just waiting in the, in the wind. Just waiting for you as I just simply, hi, how you doing? You wanna touch me? You wanna have a little fun tonight? <laughs> uh, trust me, you don't wanna touch me. If you do, you will die. Okay. Now before we uh, proceed forward, I do believe... Okay. I wasn't sure if uh, there were any other boxes back here, but uh, no. Those have already been collected, so we basically respawned uh, just before... Just before we reached... Uh, the red gem platform. Of course. And I die immediately after. <laughs> so that means we gotta go all the way back here again. Hell oh, damn it. Fine. It's totally fine. Made it through there before. We can do it again. Crap. That's what I get for hesitating. And trying to be a speedrunner, too. Once again, spinning upon uh, completing your slide is the best way of getting around in this game. It's the fastest way to travel, believe it or not. <laughs> it really, really is. Crap. I swear to God, I need... Yeah, I need that. <laughs> because I can never avoid touching that frickin' nitro crate at the very end of that frickin' row of nitro crates. It's really, really bad when you uh, have to pray that you get one of these upon respawn. <laughs> Just like with Crash 1, upon dying so many times... Ow you'll get in a, what is known as a petty mask. My god, man. I suck. Tried to slide so that way I could begin the long jump procedure, but I ended up sliding into the frickin' first crate. Fantastic. <laughs> Sometimes it's worth it just to simply take it slow, take it easy. Okay, what the hell? I should have had more iframes than that. Hmm. Oh, okay. McDonald's for lunch? That's not too bad. I haven't had any lunch yet myself. The only thing I ate today were some Pop-Tarts, and that was it. God damn it. Just about the end. 
Just gotta wait for the hedgehog to finish his little temper tantrum. And I... Oh my god, I suck! I freaking panicked. I panicked because I didn't do the slide jump first. I knew I wasn't gonna make it across the chasm, but why did I ground pound into the freaking abyss? This, di this particular collection definitely got the reputation of being uh, the Dark Souls of platformers for a reason. There we go. God damn. Now we just gotta make it to the next checkpoint with our butts intact, please. Thank you. That was just sheer panic. The funny thing is, those icicles that fall from the ceiling can kill seals and other uh, enemies that are anywhere near them. So, that is something to keep in mind. You could use the environment to your advantage. One other thing I have not yet noted, and that is, if you happen to step inside a, uh, a box that is, uh, not yet fully, uh, that hasn't come into existence yet, if you happen to walk into it while it's appearing, it will not appear until you step out of that, uh, outline. So upon exiting the outline, you should be good to go from there. Alright, we're almost done with this freaking level, thank god. <laughs> Just got the final stretch left to go. And then finally, the gem will be ours for this freaking stage. Holy crap, this took forever. I missed the box somewhere. You have got to be shitting me right now. Where did I miss a box? And why was that not moving? Seriously, where did I miss a box? I know I collected all the boxes in the bonus stage because the counter said so. Was there one of those dick boxes that appeared off screen during the hard section that I'm completely unaware of? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Son of a bitch! And after all the lives I've lost just to complete the damn level, all for nothing! Jesus Christ, all oh goddamn mighty. That's one thing I really hate about this game. It doesn't tell you exactly where you missed the box. A box or more. So, that really is stupid. I honestly feel like I should have uh, had a guide opened up 
so I know exactly how many boxes are in each section. And what do I need to... How many boxes do I need in order to complete the stage fully? And what gem do I need? I'll definitely keep this in mind for, like, future play sessions of this game, because holy crap. This game is nefarious with those kinds of bullshit. Uh, when I stop the stream, I will probably end up having dinner. Alright. There's gotta be something up here I'm completely missing. Or not. By the way, if you try to attack the mirror, nothing happens. So don't worry about it. if there was anything else there that I completely missed. Oh my god, hit the box. Thank you. That uh, one breakable box that's on the left hand side is there. So if uh, you feel like you missed something, you can uh, easily just go back and uh, grab them if you, if you so desire. But upon breaking the box, you won't be able to. God damn it, that was retarded! Again, why did I jump? Because I need the uh, freaking mask for there. By the way, there's nothing in that chasm, so don't even bother trying. Also, that was complete bullshit. die in this section at least once or multiple times whatever whatever freaking works <laughs> maybe it's just because I'm so out of practice with this game I don't know either way it's still freaking dumb Okay, I was gonna say, finally, I didn't get hit during that freaking gauntlet, but no, I ended up making another stupid mistake immediately after.
Okay. That was close. Okay. I was gonna say, it is possible to slide back up those slopes. You just have to time your slides absolutely perfectly. Damn it! Man! Killed by the freaking hedgehog again! The freaking last hedgehog before the checkpoint. God, I hate that so freaking much. Now it's gonna take me another 10 or so lives before I get another chance at that part. How did I not get that? No idea. Perhaps I'm just that freaking good now. <laughs> Take that shit. Whew. Another frame perfect recovery. Holy crap. Hedgehog and everything that it stands for. Die. Maybe I missed something within this uh, chasm here. I could have swore I got all three boxes there before. Perhaps, maybe, maybe that wasn't the case? I don't know. It is possible I could have uh, missed something by uh, sheer mistake. It is very well possible that was indeed the case. I just missed one of those boxes in there. Because it, the game just loves throwing those dick boxes at you. <laughs> hmm. If anything else, I would recommend the PC version of the game over the others. Just because of the option to be able to play the game at 60 frames per second, and you can do so with a pretty decent hardware. Not like you've got you're gonna mess out on anything if you get any other version. The Switch version would probably be the second best bet. Sure, the graphics are downgraded quite a bit compared to all other versions, but you also gain the benefit of being able to take the game on the go. Okay, I still missed a box. Because I was back at the same exact counter, pretty sure. Then again, I don't know. I just don't know. Guess we'll find out when we get to the end of the stage. But I have a bad feeling that I ended up missing another frickin' box again. And there's nothing up here, so... That rules that out. Just love it when the game just throws the uh, shit off screen. Okay, good. Got all the freaking boxes this time around. So now we can finally go on to the next level. After what seems like 10,000 years. Again. Holy freaking shit.
My god, that took way too freaking long. But it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. Okay. Finally. Level completed, and we're at 22% game completion. We still got a ways to go, though. <laughs> 10,000 years? <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> that's what it felt like. Of course, that's not literal, but hey, what can you do? All right. Now it's time for this deathless run until we reach the death platform. So, in order to get the death platform to appear, you need to get through the stage until you reach the platform, and then ride the platform to your destination. Upon reaching it, upon reaching the death platform, even if you die in the death section, you can still take the death platform as many times as you please. So long as you have reached it, and landed on it, and taken the ride on it, then you're fine. But if you die any at any other point in the stage or before you reach the platform, even if it was right there in plain sight, you will still not be able to access the platform unless you restart the entire stage and do it all over again. Which may end up being the case for me. By the way, those hippos... Upon uh, touching them, they will uh, sink after a period of time passes. One other thing that's worth noting as well is that deaths and bonus stages do not count towards uh, any sort of death penalty whatsoever when it comes to the death platform. So even if you die here, that will not count against you. You would just have to redo the bonus stage again in order to get the boxes that are here. That's it. Here we go! Bonus completed. Oh. Hello. I hate those boxes that are in the water, because if you miss your jump... And do that, stupid crap out of sheer panic! You will fail, and you will die! Well, that's, uh... Bad news, because... Because of that stupid-ass stunt, at the very end, the death platform is no longer accessible. That's what I should have done. Why didn't I do it before? Because I was a scared little frickin' pussy. Oh my God, damn it. Okay, before you hop on here, of course. Before you hop onto this particular jet ski, you need to slide, slide jump over to that platform on the left. And you need to do it like th like six times in a row. The first three times just to get over here in the first place, and another three times just to get back. And you also have to be able to maintain the full momentum of the slide in order to make the gap. Which is a lot easier said than done. If you happen to slide and jump too early, you'll end up dying. And end up falling into the water and drowning. <laughs> Which is not good. That's not fun at all. It really, really is. By the way, if you fall into those whirlpools, that's another death right there. Of course. And the death route would uh, take me to another location where uh, I can get additional boxes and get the box gem, which unfortunately we cannot get until we replay the entire stage again 
and reach the death platform without dying. Which, like I said, is a lot easier said than done. Let's try this again. And as you can see here, there are two gems that you can get in this stage. One is for completing the death route, and the other is for busting open all the boxes. Also, I did not mean to activate time trial. Upon collecting the... Well, shoot, my webcam completely froze again. Excuse me? There we go. Back in business. Ah, oh, god damn it. Why did it just suddenly start going forward? Ah, uh, and because of that. Because of that, I have to. Oh my god. Full screen, please. Maintain it. Thank you. Holy crap. Because of that stupid ass shit, and the fact that my webcam completely froze again for no freaking reason. Again, why is this happening? Why does this happen randomly? I may try downloading the uh, beta version of the Elgato software. Maybe downloading that will uh, update the drivers as well. It typically does whenever a new version of a uh, Elgato game capture software is released. Maybe it's creating some sort of conflict. I'll have to do that for the next session. Or at least before the next session and see if this freaking fixes the issue. Because if it freezes, that's no good. Because then you would have to stare at what looks like a statue and hear only a mystic voice from out of freaking nowhere. <laughs> Well, technically speaking, I have uh, done playthroughs without a webcam before, I, and I sure as hell can do it again, but still. Still, though, that's not something I really like seeing. Damn it! Come on! That's cool. Okay, let's go after this again. I honestly thought I could just simply jump on the box or just uh, spin into it while standing on top of it. No, that's not how it works. You do have to jump on the box in order to get it to activate. the first Crash Bandicoot, there is an achievement for uh, dying a certain way. I believe there's a couple of them. There we go. Finally, we've made it to the death platform. <laughs> Cheated death for the time being. Here we go. Here's a fun one. How did I live? Phew. Okay. Well, uh, completing the death route just gives you a gem and allows you to make your escape. So technically speaking, you can complete the level sooner if you uh, take the death route. So that's pretty neat. Now the question remains, how am I going to get to all those boxes that I was missing? Perhaps I need another colored gem in order to reach it? I don't know. 
your guess is as good as mine here, folks. But for right now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave that stage alone. Until I collect all the colored gems, and in which case I may start making my way back. So, time to grin and bear it. <laughs> okay, so I was wrong about Coco being available throughout the entire adventure. Within certain levels, usually it involves riding animals, such as Bear It, or another bear-related level, you will immediately switch to Crash. So, just like, like with the hog riding levels, we now have riding levels that are technically auto-scrollers. So once again, you just have to move left and right and do your best to not run into any obstacles and try not to get yourself killed while also trying to bust open all the boxes. Unlike the hog, you can actually run faster at will without executing any sort of weird glitches by simply pushing the square button. Doing so will allow you to not only gain some extra speed, but you'll also uh, be able to cr cross large chasms while running over and over again. Also, that looks like fake crash. <laughs> That's funny. And if you miss any boxes, it's wise just to simply say screw it and KMS. KMS into like the nearest pick or into the nearest obstacle or enemy, whatever it may be. Run into it and redo that section again. How did I live? No idea. And how did I die there? devil is that shit? God damn it. Ran too fast. Missed the box. I wonder why the polar bear is so friendly with us. Like, he allows us to ride it. And how is Crash even able to ride the thing? The polar bear is a bear cub. That's usually not, uh... You usually can't ride bear cubs. Unless they're, uh... They're a certain age. In which case... Well, it is very well possible that could be the case. Not too sure. Not gonna question it too much. I've already questioned it enough as is. Okay, there we go. Level completed. And Bazinga. And upon completing riding levels, no matter what you, no matter what happens, you will uh, switch to Coco immediately upon completion if you were playing us or in the first place. So, let's go on to the next level. Crash Crush. Reason? Because. Sliding can help you avoid dangerous obstacles. This is true, and it can also be useful in many other ways. Including getting around the map more quickly. And... It can also help you with dealing with certain enemies and other things, too. So that's not the only thing that the slide is useful for. There is one thing I have not yet mentioned, and that is with the end scene trilogy, new animations were added for these boulder chase scenes. So, as you can see, the expression is normal as of right now. But upon being chased by a boulder, Coco or Crash, depending on who you're playing as, will they'll show a different expression of uh, fear and being scared. Also, this is a entirely optional area. Head this way in order to head that way and bust up in some more boxes. Thankfully, there, was, there is a platform at the very end where you don't have to make your way all the way back. 
without uh, having to deal with the camera issues. I wish more levels were like that, but nope. Only some levels are like that, unfortunately. Until mods come around to uh, allow you to completely redesign the levels. <laughs> That's really the best we have right now. Well, then again, there is a mod out there which allows you to teleport yourself anywhere within the level that you so desire. Alrighty. Well, if you have to leave so soon, see you tonight for Smash Brothers. If anything else, you could probably plug in your tablet into, like, uh, the wall and whatnot and charge it that way. So that way you can keep using it while, uh, it's charging. Just something else that you could do. But if you don't want to do it and you have to leave, that's fine too. Either way, I'll see you later this evening. Okay. Oops. On to this bonus stage once again. Not too hard, just uh... Bust open whatever boxes you see, and you should be perfectly fine. And upon completing it, there's the crystal. By the way, speedrunners I don't think uh, go through the bonus stages at all. So that is something to keep in mind too. By the way, while you're accelerating via those uh, green boost pads, You'll bust up in whatever uh, boxes are in the uh, way. So, that's pretty nice. But there we go. Level completed. There is another thing I have not mentioned, and that is, just like with the original game, I'm not too sure, but... I feel like if the boulder smashes a box open, it would not count towards your total. At least in the original game. But in the Insane Trilogy, if it does bust open a box, then it counts. Which is perfectly fair. Why was it not like that in the first place? Nobody knows. Alright. Now it's time for the next level, the last one of the second floor too. The Eel Deal. <laughs> yeah, it's the Eel Deal, all right. <laughs> okay. I just got a notification saying that someone just went live on Twitch. So, depending on how I'm feeling, I may uh, send everyone their way upon the stream's completion. And as you can see, there is uh, something else that's worth noting in this stage, too. And that is, in this stage, you can actually get your hands on the green gem. The green gem in this stage, you don't need to do anything special. It's just, uh, within this stage in particular, the, the gem is hidden. And we also have a new obstacle here. We also... The obstacle is the eel. If you happen to be in the water when the electric eel goes off and starts shooting electricity, also hidden room. Just jump into the safe door. It's a fake wall. God damn it. I knew I wasn't going to make it. But yeah. Within that room full of uh, nitro crates, just simply head through the safe door and you should be able to, you'll be able to face right through no problem. Okay. Damn it! It was either that or get zapped again. Damn it! I panicked! Out! Okay, 
now that the green gem has been collected, we can just simply head out of here. Head back the way we came. Unfortunately, we will still have to deal with whatever obstacles we left this way. Including the eels and the rats with spikes on them, like them, those assholes. But... Another thing you could do is intentionally die upon collecting the green gem. So that way, you'll warp straight back to the next the previous checkpoint. Damn it. This way you won't have to deal, deal with the obstacles that you left behind. And you can just simply continue on your merry way. In fact, I think speedrunners do this quite a lot. And that is what they call Death Warp. It's a mechanic you can very easily abuse, and you should do so. Okay, on to the next bonus stage. This is another one of those stages where you can just simply uh, go right through without an issue. Once again, there's not really anything major of note here, as far as I'm aware. Just have to deal with a couple of bouncy boxes up here, but really that's about it. And there we go. Stage is already uh, almost done. We're 25 boxes out of 79. We're technically 26 now. Also, those fans. If you happen to hit one of those fans, you will, of course, die or take a hit. Okay, this way... This way leads you to the crystal as well as a dead end. It may seem like a dead end, but that's because of this. Trust me, you want to go that way. You really do. Just so that way you can uh, grab whatever boxes are there at the dead end, grab whatever goodies are inside, and not only that, you can also you can also grab the crystal that's hidden in there too. By the way, I've not mentioned this yet, but uh, these steel reinforced crates, uh, you can jump on them, but you won't be able to bounce off of them. Also, say hello to a new mechanic that was introduced in Crash 2. Hanging off of monkey bars. And hanging off of the monkey bars is a pretty easy endeavor. Just jump onto uh, one of these points here and just move like you typically would. You can spin while you're sw swinging around to and fro. But you won't be able to uh, jump off of the... You won't be able to jump at all, which does make sense, and that is indeed realistic. But, other than that, that's basically the monkey bar section, and really that's about it. You could also spin as well while swinging on the monkey bars, but you won't be able to spin against very many enemies, and if you run into someone, you will fall off and die. <laughs> Unless you have one of those... Uh, Aku Aku Mask, in which case you'll just simply take a hit and proceed onward like nothing ever happened. And there we go. That's the green gem. Hmm. We have a transmission. Ten of twenty-five crystals. You're on your way. I'm running low on power, so communication from this point will be difficult. I wonder what he said there. Nobody knows. Anyway, on to the next boss, the Komodo Brothers. Once again, another uh, not very difficult boss coming up whatsoever. So, let's go ahead and get things started. Also, Coco cannot fight any of the bosses. Crash is the only one who can do that. For whatever reason. Alright, time to fight the Komodo Brothers, and as the hint suggested, direct attacks will not hurt them at all. 
So instead, what you have to do is wait for one of the Komodo brothers to finish spinning, get dizzy, then smack into that Komodo brother and have him smack into the other one. In which case, it's all a matter of just avoiding the swords that come swinging at you, and the cycle repeats. During the third phase of this fight, which is occurring right now, after he finishes spinning and throwing his knives, he will spin his brother again, but this time, he's gonna start throwing swords. Also, what the hell was that? I just touched the sword. I just touched it, and I died. What the hell? It's like if you touch the wrong, touch the sword the wrong way, explosion. Like it's a Michael Bay film. Like, boop. <laughs> Uh, that is some strange shit. Whoa! But again, not a hard fight. You just uh, have to avoid getting hit by the swords and avoid touching them as well, so be aware of your surroundings. And there we are. Time for the final spin. And just like I said, the... Uh, Swords are going to be thrown at you throughout the course of that particular part of the fight. Afterwards, just wait for his younger brother to finish spinning, get dizzy once again, and then smack him upside the head. And bada bing, bada boom, he is done. He's finished. Game over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That feels so freaking good. All right. I did not mean to go down. I meant to go up. Oh well, that's fine. We can go up. Let's go ahead and head on up to the next floor. Which holds some very fun levels. And at this point, I believe around the third or fourth warp room was... Yeah, it was the fourth warp room where I gave up. <laughs> Good show, Crash. The Komodo brothers obviously lacked your metal, but now's not the time to get cocky. There are still many crystals to obtain. Remember, the world is counting on you. No kidding. Thanks, Cortex. Way to remind me. Alright. Now we have several new levels, like Plant Food, Sewer Later, Bear Down, Road to Ruin, and Unbearable. <laughs> okay, let's do Plant Food first. Reason? Because this level not only holds uh, a special gem, but it also holds the clear gem and the crystal itself. So, in this stage, as the hint suggested, there is going to be a timer at a certain point in the level. As far as what point that is, I'm pretty sure it's basically like the same point as the last jet ski-like level like this. Where upon reaching the first docking platform, a timer will begin counting down. Yep, here it comes. Thankfully, you do have plenty of time to get through these, uh, get through this level. Damn it. And I believe if you die, the timer will not appear again. So, you will have to restart the entire level in order to get another chance. Which is stupid. But, oh well, not exactly much you can really do. So, let's go ahead and try that again. Strangely, in this particular warp room, if, uh... Dang it, what am I trying to say? In this warp room, you can't just walk into the levels and then just start it up right away. No, you have to jump into the portal. Which, it does make sense considering the fact that the floor is lowered and you do have to go through some sewer water. But even so, figure I throw that out there. Okay. Let's not be stupid this time. Grab you. 
and I fell. Damn it. I wonder if, uh, if I don't grab the checkpoint and yet I still make it to that point, will I still get the opportunity to try again and get the timer to reappear? Or do I have to exit out of the stage in order to get another shot? Hmm. Guess we'll find that out right now. If it's, uh, not the case... Okay, good. The timer reactivated. So we got another shot at this. Okay. Damn it! Went too fast for the naked eye. How did I not kill him, nor did he kill me? What the heck is that about? I don't get it, and I don't care. I hate riding across those whirlpools. I really do. It's always so nerve-wracking. Because if you hit them the wrong way, then you're completely screwed. By the way, you don't want to hit any of the checkpoints. You don't want to go into the bonus stage whatsoever while you have this timer active. If you hit a checkpoint and die at any other point, then you are going... Then you will not be able to get the uh, special gem that's here. Also, it's faster just to simply sacrifice an Aku Aku mask here in order to proceed on more to this last part right here. There we go. Gem is ours. And that is the yellow gem, folks. And another pretty easy level two. Well, kind of, but not really. That was actually pretty dang difficult. By the way, with that particular section with the two uh, piranha plants, if you don't have an Aku Aku mask, you will have to waste some time in order to attack both of them and kill them both in order to create a safe path for you to get across. But other than that, uh, other than that, if you happen to have a mask, great. Sacrifice it and save some time and just go. Now that has been completed, now we just gotta get the clear gem that's here. Which should be pretty simple to do. And we should be able to do so relatively easily. And once again, we don't need to worry about any sort of timer whatsoever throughout the entirety of this, uh, stage now that the special special gem has been collected. God damn it. Well it was either that or get blown up by nitro free. <laughs> eh, damn it. Okay. I've also noticed that the bonus stages in general seem to be a lot shorter than they typically are, or... Okay, that was some strange shit. <laughs> Almost like DK64 levels kind of, uh, strange. How Doctor Strange. <laughs> but anyway, the strange thing was it seemed like Crash was glitching underneath of the platform. I would have laughed even harder if he managed to get, go through the platform and get back on top. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. But no. Thankfully, this game is nowhere near as broken as DK64. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, just saying. Let me make sure both of the TNT boxes are cleared out here. They are. Good. Alright, now the rest of this should be a nice smooth ride. I say as uh, I get chomped on. Fantastic. 
By the way, there is an achievement if you let a piranha plant eat you. Okay, where the hell is the achievement? Okay, that's weird. Perhaps that achievement is not in this game, and it's only in the first game. Weird. Well, whatever, it's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay. And that, as they say, is that. That's all the boxes here in this stage. Phew! All right! Age done. Though, of course, we still got a ways to go. There we go. Another gem added to the collection. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do unbearable next. Why? Because not because the level is unbearable. <laughs> But rather because I feel like it. And there is a hint on the stage where the giant bear opens a secret. Funny thing is, that particular secret is kind of out of the way and strangely placed. And thankfully I do know where the secret is because I did stumble across it myself. But still. So in this instance, the bear acts like the boulder. If you run into him, no matter what you do, you will die. <laughs> and there are multiple polar bears too. Giant polar bears to be exact. How do they get so freaking big? <laughs> I know uh, bears can be huge and all, like they can be taller than a six foot man, but usually they're not that... They're not that... That big. Yeah, damn. By the way, here's the secret. This area is, once again, optional. And it is a pretty difficult path to get through. But, upon completing it... You will not only be awarded additional boxes... But, other goodies that are here, too. There are also uh, checkpoint boxes here, too. So, once again, something else to keep in mind. Crap. You also have to watch out for uh, bullets as they're being fired from the frickin' uh, hunter's guns. Thankfully, they don't go, like, uh, in a realistic fashion. Instead, it's more cartoony, where they have... Uh, they traverse very, very slowly, kind of like a bullet bell. But unlike bullet bells from Super Mario, you can't jump on the bullet and lift. Instead, instead you have to dodge them, otherwise you will die upon contact. Which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, if you think about it. I mean, you're jumping on a bullet for crying out loud. Why am I questioning the bullet logic? <laughs> By the way, once you initiate a belly flop, you can make a very small, slight adjustment upon uh, executing it, but that's about it. Damn. <sighs> Knew I was gonna get shot or chopped into a frickin' meat grinder. Either way, it wouldn't have been fun. Let's try this again now. There we go. Finally. How you get the move on the ground? Here we go. 
By the way, more dick boxes. Be sure to grab these before jumping back down and busting open that jump box. Otherwise, there'll be no way to get back up. Crap! Damn it! By the way, in order to deal with those uh, heavily armored armadillo things, I believe that's what they are, armadillos, yeah, in order to deal with them, you can't just jump on them and go about your day. No. What you need to do first is spin into them in order to destroy their armor. Afterwards, Afterwards, you can uh, either jump or spin on them to finish them off. Or... Or you can do a belly flop and destroy their armor that way, too. Just keep in mind, upon contacting the enemy... Oh, of course, another one of those battle arenas. By the way, if you want to, uh... Okay, what the hell was that? I was nowhere near that frickin' Nitro Crate. What the hell is that shit about? Well, whatever. At least that's done. So all there's left now is just a bonus stage and the remaining part of the level. Now, in this particular bonus level, you will have to do some tricky platforming that involves slide jumping. But, really, it's not that bad. Just perform the slide jumps and reveal whatever boxes are here. By the way, you can't hit those uh, nitro crates from uh, any point here. The only way to destroy them is with this. There we go. All the nitro crates have been destroyed. So, we're good to go. All more to those next bear chase sequence. Also, just like with the, uh, whoa, okay, how did I live? How did I live through that? Crap. Well, that sucked. As I was trying to say, in the original, I believe if the bear destroys any boxes, then it won't count towards your total. But in the insane trilogy, that was fixed, just like with the boulders. I could be wrong on that. Maybe he also counted towards your totals in the original as well at the Insane Trilogy. Though I'm pretty sure that's not the case. God damn it. Probably should have just uh, took the L there and just slid the rest of the way through. Also, you gotta love the additional detail that was given to the bear in the Insane Trilogy. By the way, slide spinning is probably your best method of traversing this uh, section of the level here. Just keep in mind that you still have to deal with a lot of obstacles and a lot of electrical gain, which can very easily kill you if you uh, happen to fail to execute the move properly. Another thing that's worth noting too is that if you ha happen to hit a boost panel the wrong way, then what will happen is you'll be thrown into the nearest pit and die. And that is not exactly something you want to do now, is it? No, it never is. Also, you have to deal with the lizards too as they make their way down this place. The last thing you need to do is, uh... Last thing you need is to run into a freaking lizard, and I keep running into the damn electrical gate. The freaking idiot! I gotta stop doing that. I keep thinking I could just simply slide under and do a spin immediately upon completion, but no, 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 no. And there's me being a dumbass and panicking and double-tapping the frickin' crouch button while jumping in the air. 
because I was trying to do a slide jump and instead I did a belly flop into my untimely doom! these electrical gates, you don't want to mess around with them. You want to get through them as quickly as possible. Alright, on to the last part of the level. And this time, we're going to be riding on our old polar bear friend here and just have him give us a ride throughout the rest of the way. This shouldn't be too difficult to do. And there we go. Level is done. And I got all the boxes, thank God. There we are! Level completed! See, that wasn't so bad. It wasn't as unbearable as the name suggested. <laughs> Maybe trying something. As far as what that is, nobody will ever know until it is either too late or something else happens. Alright, on to the next level. Let's do Bear Down because <laughs> tap run before jump for greater distance. I'll definitely keep that in mind as we go about this level, that's for sure. And this is another one of those uh, riding bear levels. Sweet. Let's have some fun. By the way, you will be doing this a lot throughout this level. To cross large gaps and also to get through obstacles more efficiently and more quickly. Just try not to abuse it, unless you're going for the time trial, in which case you kind of have to abuse it all the frickin' time. You can also execute the move... <laughs> okay, that was funny. You can also execute the move by pushing the right bumper as well, if you're flying on Xbox. Or even PC, and you're using a PC... I mean, the Xbox controller or something. Just saying, just another way you can play the game. You can also use keyboard and mouse, but I would not recommend it for a platformer like this. But that's just me. Sometimes short little hops is the way to go, and other times it's better to hold the jump button and pray for dear life that you'll make it. <coughs> the hell was that? Yeah. That was just me turning too soon. That's what it was. Nothing more, nothing less. Just a simple, honest mistake. I really do like the lighting here. Oh. Okay, why weren't those guys lifting up that uh, ice block thing? They usually do. Perhaps they're programmed to not lift the thing up? I don't know. Also, traversing over ice is a pretty difficult task within itself when it comes to this particular these particular riding levels. By the way, there is a secret back here. So, let's go ahead and grab what we can here with the gem as well as the crystal and start making our way around. 
By the way, don't take too long on the platforms, otherwise they will start to sink. But there we go. Upon reaching that particular platform there, you'll return to the warp room and be able to access another new path within a level. And that level I'm talking about is Air Crash. So let's go ahead and drop off the crystal and gem here and proceed. Let's head into Air Crash and see what's up. There is a death platform in this level, so... That is something... Something to keep in mind in this stage. But since we're at a harder point... Since we're already here via a different path, we don't have to worry so much about the death platforms. Okay, that wasn't so hard. And wow, would you look at that, we're already at 47 gems, I mean 47 boxes out of, uh, what was it, 102? Yes, 102. Oh yeah. By the way, if you want to return to the hard route at any time, just once again return to that uh, warp room in the insane trilogy and re-enter the level that way. Otherwise, if you're playing the original release, then you would have to go back through via the secret exit again in order to get another shot. So that is something to keep in mind depending on which version of the game you're playing. And once again, since the death route is not really a part of the equation here, we don't need to worry so much about dying. Sure, uh, the platform will still be there, and you can choose to take it if you want, but the whole reason why we even took the hard path to get back here in the first place is so that way we have the possibility of getting all the gems that are, I mean, all the boxes that are in the stage. If you take the death route here, then there would be no way you would be able to get all the boxes here. Just saying. Okay, note to self, upon the... Uh... Damn it. Upon respawning via here, reactivate the TNT. There we go. Damn it. I hate these freaking platforms so much. And just like before, you can get up to two pity masks at once after you die a certain number of times within a particular section. Here we go. That's uh, done and up the way. So now we can finally move on. Holy crap, that took forever. By the way, if you uh, collect three... Uh, three uh, Aku Aku masks while you're riding the jet ski, you will not be invincible while you're riding it, which is really unfortunate. So that's kind of a waste, but you do need it in order to, in order to have a count towards your totals. Otherwise, that would, uh, otherwise that would probably make you the most overpowered thing in existence. <laughs> like you aren't already. But hey, just a second. There we go. Another gem added to the collection. And that's all the gems in the warp room number two. Let's head back into warp room three and proceed onward to another level. 
Let's see, what should we do next? I'm gonna do sewer later. There are two different gems that you can get here. And the first one you can get by earning the yellow gem elsewhere in a different level. Since we already have this gem, by the way, if you pull up the pause screen, you can view all the different uh, colored gems that you have in your possession. You can also view the total crystals as well as the gems that you have and view total completion that you have up to this point as well. So right now we're nearly at 50% completion. By the time we finish up this level and grab everything that's here, we should be at like the 50% mark. By the way, that guy can be an asshole. How so? Well, he shoots fire and his hitbox range is pretty dang massive. Like, really, really massive. How is that the case? I have no freaking idea. But either way, time to take this yellow platform down. There we go. God damn it. By the way, welcome to the hard path of this level. In this uh, particular path, the water is electrified throughout the entire area. So, if you don't want to get zapped and you don't want to die so easily, you will have to... You will have to work a little bit of magic into the mix. By the way, TNT boxes cannot bust open these steel reinforced crates. So that is something to keep in mind. By the way, I do believe there is some backtracking that we do have to do here. I have a feeling that I'm wrong and I'm just wasting my freaking time. Nope, I wasn't wrong. Well, that's just great. Now I have to die it so many times so I can get myself a freaking penny mask and bust through the freaking fan. Fantastic. There's no way to bust through the fan otherwise. The only other way you can bust through these fans is to knock an enemy into it. So like I said, you do need to go through go through the hard section and then make your way backwards. As odd and as backwards as that sounds, that's based that's exactly what you have to do. Also say hello to bouncing on boxes on top of frickin' nitro crates. <laughs> uh, get used to doing that, because once again, we'll be doing that quite often. And, uh, when you do, things are gonna go boom if you touch them the wrong way. And that ain't gonna be fun. Okay, at least we made it back to the yellow gem path now, so all there's left to do now is just to make it to the next checkpoint, hopefully without getting killed. And I got killed. Fantastic. Of course. Oh, come on! I jumped on the freaking rat's head! gotta count for something. God damn it. I really hate this freaking camera so freaking much.
damn it. Okay, that was complete bullshit. I hit the spin button. I hit it. I hit the freaking button. Backtracking is probably, yeah, it is the most frustrating part of Crash Bandicoot 2. It honestly is. It's just, once again, due to the bad camera, it does not pan back far enough when you're proceeding backwards throughout the stage. And that is freaking stupid. By the way, if you're not confident that you'll make it through the spinning blades, of the fan, what you can do is knock out all three blades before proceeding. The enemies respawn infinite, or these particular enemies respawn infinitely within certain sections of the level. Use that to your advantage. Doing things like that will allow you to not only get to uh, further places, but it will also make things a lot easier on you too. Meet Jesus. I honestly thought that things were going to go south super fast. Okay, that's the exit. Crap. Honestly, I thought the left path was uh, the one that's considered the optional path. Damn it. All because of shit camera angles. By the way, this particular crystal can be very easily missed if you uh, happen to just proceed onward to the exit. God damn it. Right, I don't need to go that far back. I always panic whenever it comes to those frickin' rats. Why? Their patterns can be a bit uh, unpredictable at times, and it's also a bit inconsistent for whatever reason. Also, why not uh, destroy the fan? Whatever. Sometimes the spinning physics can be a bit wonky at times. Like, you really want them to work, and sometimes they just flat out won't. Oh, of course. I did have to go that way anyway. In order to not only activate the gray exclamation point box, but also detonate those uh, other boxes. Come on, man! Alright, one box remaining. I have a feeling that I missed something, like way back earlier in the stage. I just have that feeling. And again, maybe there's something in here. Yep, there is. There we go. That's number 57. Okay, that was fucking bullshit. And you know it. Absolute bullshit. Spun into him before he started shooting the fire, and yet I still get punished. That's what I mean about shit hit detection. Sometimes it can be so freaking broken that it's not even funny.
And what's worse is that the when within certain sections where you must backtrack in order to get to where you need to be, <laughs> sometimes that's a lot easier said than done. Because there's so much crap that you need to take into account in order to be able to backtrack in the first place. Now then, let's not be stupid. Let's take this. Screw that guy and everything that he holds here. And die. <laughs> Need to Crap. Seriously, I hate those freaking eels so much. They do go off at like exact intervals, like after a certain period of time passes. But it's different with each area of the where the eels are located. Like in one room they go off after like two or three seconds and sometimes sometimes they go off at a different point in time. It honestly depends on the room. But there we go. Finally after what seems like an eternity, level is finally fully completed. Of course, minus the relics, but even so, not going to worry about the relics just yet. If at all. Hmm, the hell was that? Also, achievement. One man's trash. Okay, that's done. That is freaking done. Onward to the last level of this warp room. That is Go to Ruin. Oh dear. This level. Right here. Clear gems often appear at the end of death routes. That's very true. Speaking of death routes, there may be one in the stage. Not 100% sure. But anyway, there is some boxes back over here on the left hand side, but unfortunately, you cannot reach them right now. There may be a, a box, a steel box switch that you can uh, activate, but uh, that's probably a ways into the stage. Alright, here we go. Oh, hello. Here's the desk platform right here. Okay, here comes a really fun, fun mechanic. Time to play Donkey Kong! And instead of barrels, you have to jump over logs. And the hit detection on those uh, particular monkeys for whatever reason can be a bit wonky. Sometimes if you spin, it, spin at them in the wrong way, it'll count as you receiving damage. Plus dodging the logs at the monkey's throw is a lot harder than it looks. One other thing worth noting too is that uh, these platforms Crash does not move with the platform. So that is something to keep in mind. By the way, death route completed and there are no boxes there on the death route at all. Damn it. <laughs> so that's good. If you were planning on going after all the boxes in the first place, upon completing the death route, it is a better idea to just, uh, simply leave the death route and just simply die after grabbing the gem and completing the death route, and you don't have to worry about it ever again. But you do need to, uh... Okay, now at this point, I'm pretty sure you need to start backtracking towards the very beginning of the stage if you want to go after all the boxes. By the way, 
if you take the death route, there is a chance, and a very high chance at that, that you're going to end up missing the crystal that is on this stage. Because upon completing the death route, you end up up there in front of you where the stacks of, stack of boxes are. Yeah. That's past where the crystal is located. That's right, I'm just gonna go. I knew they were gonna start breathing fire sooner or later. And that was just me being a dumbass. By the way, I'm not too sure if there's really an easy method for gaining lives in uh, this version of Crash 2. There might be, and I'm just not 100% sure on that. But, just want to let you know, it is very well possible there could be something. God damn the stupid camera. God, I hate this camera so much. What's even worse is that I have to not only make my way all the way back to the very beginning of the stage in order to get those boxes crap i also have to make my way all the way back to where i was without dying either And of course, there are going to be other obstacles along the way that you will have to traverse over and make blind guesses. Okay, that was a waste of time. God damn it. Okay. Well, never mind on that then. Okay, I think this is one of those levels where you have to come back via a secret exit via a different level from here. That's the only way you're going to be able to get all the boxes. So even if you collected all the boxes along this path here, you still would not be able to... You still would not be able to fully complete the stage. Speaking of stage completion, I think the exit's just over there. Kind of funny if you think about it. Anyway, in this bonus stage... Oh. Bullshit! <laughs> no. In actuality... In this particular bonus stage, there are a lot of uh, outlined uh, boxes that you can't really mess with. Not until you hit a series of steel boxes that reveal another steel box. And you have to jump over the chasm over and over again in order to bust open uh, the boxes that are required in order to traverse over the gap. And that's this bonus level. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's literally done right here and now. Cool. Alright. Now that the checkpoint has been marked upon uh, completing the bonus stage, we'll be able to get through. Also, say hello to or our old monkey friend. <laughs> and he means business, too. You can tell by the cybernetic uh, mutation on his arm. <laughs> and I believe his head also received some sort of cybernetic treatment, too. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Yep, yep, it is cybernetically uh, enhanced. And as you can see, we only have 57 out of the 89 boxes in this stage. And unfortunately, we won't be able to get the boxes that are here until we find the secret exit and return to this level a different way. So that is kind of unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Boom, and boom. Crash, my boy. You are more than halfway there. But 
I'm sure you've noticed that things are getting harder. The last ten crystals will be the hardest to gather, and my... <coughs> our enemies will be sending their strongest forces to thwart you. I'll contact you again when you have completed the next war room. Hmm. And he's not kidding when he says that, too. There is still quite a lot uh, left to get through. And there's only 10 levels left. Alright, on to the next boss before we head to the next warp room. Tiny Tiger. <laughs> and Tiny Tiger is a reoccurring character in this game. And that ain't tiny. That ain't no tiny ass tiger. <laughs> He's someone who's definitely skipped leg day. For sure. But anyway, for this boss fight, what you have to do is just uh, lure Tiny Tiger over to the platforms that are falling down. The ones that are falling are going to be flashing red. So be sure to lure him over to uh, where the platforms are going to fall. So take your time and just get through this fight uh, relatively easily. And if you have to make a daring escape, just uh, do a slide jump and you should be fine. Or you can just do swag strats and just slide jump all the time. Like a boss. And as the fight continues, the fight will get harder. And there we go. Tiny is defeated. <laughs> Another very easy fight. <laughs> I don't think that even took a minute to complete. Wow. That is hilarious. <laughs> uh, sweet. Well, anyway, we are just about at the three hour mark. There are still uh, several more levels we need to get through. And as Cortex said, there are ten more crystals to find. So maybe what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to try to complete the next uh, few warp rooms and collect whatever I can. And whatever I miss here, I'll just uh, collect them in the next play session. It really depends on how I'm feeling. Okay, let's do this level first. Behaving. Reason why? Not only is it because I feel like it, but also because this contains the last uh, color gem in the game. The purple gem. Let's do this. And God, how I hate this level. Special lo gem lies beyond a clever de deception. That is very, very true. A clever deception indeed is what we're going to be looking for. Also say hello to a new mechanic that's introduced in this level and one other level. Being able to burrow underground. Under certain services, such as the ones that are highlighted here in like purplish, pinkish color. If you push the spin button, you'll be able to go underground. Doing so will allow you to not only be invincible while you're underground for the most part, with the exception being against the... Uh, TNT or Nitro Crates, you're not invincible while you're in there. So try not to burrow your way on any of the Nitro Crates while you're underground. Otherwise, you will instantly die. Also, you have to deal with bees. Those bees are the most annoying things in existence. I swear to God, I am not kidding when I say that too. Thankfully, a large majority of the sections that require you to deal with the bees are, uh, they do have a section where you can burrow yourself underground and safely traverse past them. However, there are going to be sections like these where you still have to deal with the bees anyway. So in which case, if you don't have much of a choice and you must deal with the bees, then Spin at the bees and pray to God that they don't kill you. They come at you in a swarm and they will not hesitate, hesitate to try and take you out. Also, you see this uh, stack of nitro crates here? 
while unlike all other nitro crates in the entire game, you can actually walk on top of this set of uh, nitro crates, as if it was a staircase. Take it, and be whisked away to a new mystical land. Or in other words, another area where you can earn yourself the purple gem, and also another fun trial. God damn it, game! That was that crap. Of course, you can just take the purple gem and leave, but there are boxes to collect in this stage, and I'm pretty sure there are some boxes within that section, so... <laughs> Let's not uh, dilly-dally and just grab whatever is in here and go. Again. This section is really damn difficult to get through. Especially getting through it in one piece. Oh boy, that's a real fun one. This requires a ton of concentration, as well as a lot of, uh, really good timing, and some luck, too. And pray to the- pray, pray to Aaron Jesus that he is kind to you. Okay, let's try this again now. Hopefully I won't get murdered by something stupid or end up missing my enemies. Let's not do that, please. Crap, man! I knew I was screwed because there was no way I would have been able to jump again. more with feeling, please. Thank you very much. Shouldn't have done that! Why did I do that? Uh. By the way, I have no idea when you can get a penny mask at this particular checkpoint point, or if you can even get one at all. I'm pretty sure that you can. I'm pretty sure you can get one if you die enough times, like uh, any other one. But I'm not so sure about here, though. You know what would be nice? A checkpoint? At some point in this uh, section of hell? Oh, come on! I jumped on him! I jumped on his ass! And yet, he still killed me! How? Hmm. Uh, Ugh, this game, I swear to God. Alright, let's go at this again, please. Oh, 
How about we don't worry about the steel armadillo so much and just simply ignore them and go about our day? Oh, thank God, oh one God. of you. Okay. Well, strangely enough, upon completing the gauntlet, you're whisked back here. Which is uh, quite a ways back, but thankfully it's not that far back. I can't see. Also, screw those freaking bomb plants. They are one of the worst enemies in the entire game. Timing uh, their explosives. Timing their uh, things. Also, that was bullshit too. Well, thank God this uh, checkpoint is here. By the way, it is possible to kill those bomb plants. You would just have to belly flop on them. God damn it. <laughs> oh, there we go. There's an achievement. Buzz off. Do this. You can get this achievement by uh, simply getting stunned by a bee. Which is very, very easy to do. checkpoint already, even though we are already at the bonus stage. Maybe I died so many times that a new checkpoint spawned. It's possible. Then again, maybe that checkpoint box was always there. I honestly don't know that far. Either way, it was there for how little sense that made. And there we go. Bonus stage completed. Sure, we didn't get all the boxes that are here, but the reason why we couldn't do so in the first place was due to the fact that... It was due to the fact that those uh, boxes that we weren't able to get were nitro boxes. God damn it, game. <laughs> I will say this. The death animations did transfer over, for the most part, between the original as well as, uh, Crash. Ow! Now that's what you call hammer time! <laughs> well, technically that's a mallet. Not so much a hammer, but still, that's kind of weird. Okay. You can also kill those plants by going underground within certain parts of the level and just killing them that way. There we go. That's all the boxes. Behaving has been misbehaved. <laughs> In other words, it's finished. It's done. Okay. Hank... Freaking God, that is over. Although, it looks like my webcam froze again. Damn it. Alright, hang on a sec. Let me go ahead and fix it. Deactivate and then activate. And back to the game. And it's in frickin' Windows mode. Because reasons. Damn it. Zoom, please. Thank you. 
Jesus. Man, this has been one strange session where my freaking cam link would just randomly freeze for no reason. <laughs> okay. Alright, on to another level. I just noticed this now, but it looks like all but one level has two gems in it. So, yeah, that should tell us something. Quite interesting. Alright, let's do another level. Hanging out. Reason? Eh, hanging out is quite fun. <laughs> Jump right after a slide for a great distance. Well, come, of course. Why the hell would? Why the hell wouldn't that be the case? God, I hate these skill levels so much. Especially dealing with those freaking electric eels. They are the freaking worst. Oh, hello! Not exactly a new enemy, but this, this is definitely some new behavior. Not so much with the Crash 2, because this also occurred in the original. But, hey, just saying. In certain parts of this level in particular, those uh, enemies will come charging at you like raging bulls. <laughs> Doing YOLO strats, because it's fun to do YOLO strats. Other than that, though, it's not so bad. Alright. Now we got some nice uh, monkey bar action here. You can get through this pretty quickly if you happen to get the right pattern. And you happen to get through the section fast enough. You also have to keep in mind that there's also uh, parts of the level where uh, you will have to make some uh, really, really tight jumps. And if you don't happen to have one of those Aku, Aku masks on you, ow! God damn it. <laughs> you will die. Okay, so apparently one big difference between uh, original as well as uh, the insane trilogy version of Crash 2 is that unlike the original where if you get hit you would just simply fall and die and execute a unique death animation in this version you just simply die like as if you uh, did something else that warranted a death speaking of death animations um I've not mentioned this, but in the original Crash Bandicoot, there was not really so much of an actual death animation per se, but the death animation in the original game was longer than the Insane version. Insane short shortened the sequence by quite a lot. I should have activated that checkpoint. Dang it. Oh well. Going through here is a bit of a death gauntlet. But upon completing the Death Gauntlet, you will be whisked away to another new area of a level that we previously visited. As far as what that level is, we'll know what it is soon enough. As soon as I can get back to that point without getting killed, that is. Which again, is a lot easier said than done, because this next section... These levels here are going to be the hardest ones yet. Not the hardest in the game by far. That's in the final warp room. That's where the bullshit really hits the fan. <laughs> and trust me, that's not fun to deal with at all. Okay. There's the checkpoint. Let's head back this way and see if we can get through this death gauntlet. Which, like I said, is very, very difficult to do. And it's very easy to end up getting immediately swarmed into, uh, into a death lock where you're unable to escape. And besides, you're not able to swing on these monkey bars very quickly. How did I... Never mind. Irrelevant. 
I really hate that death section, but he will be rewarded with some extra lives if he can get to them. Which can make up for the number of lives you spent trying to get to this point. Even so, just saying. And sometimes the depth perception here for judging where the enemies are relevant to your current location is a bit of a desperate struggle. But if you can get through that death gauntlet, <laughs> you get an achievement hang in there, maybe. And you also get access to the secret warp room once again and access to a new path on Totally Fly. Coco is definitely informing us that the uh, things are definitely not what they seem to be. So, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we still will have to help out Cortex as much as it pains me to say that, but that's uh, something we have to do. Hmm. By the way, Totally Fly is a new level that we haven't been to yet. And now we're accessing an alternate pathway in order to get here. So within this level and one other similar level to this, the level is going to be shrouded in darkness. Okay. It looks like the death animation for Crash blowing into a pipe upon detonating a nitro crate is still present. That's just uh, that animation in particular was not given to Coco. Also, is it me or was that enemy running at a lower frame rate at around uh, 25 or less frames per second? Either way, it's weird. Anyway, as I was trying to say, these levels are going to be in sheer darkness, kind of like lights out in Crash 1. But unlike Crash 1, where your light source are the Aku Aku masks, and you can take a hit without too much of an issue, here, the light source is your only means of being able to see in the entire level. And throughout these uh, bonus stages here, it's gonna be pretty difficult to keep an eye on the light source and keep up with it. By the way, the light sources don't last forever. Wait, I think those uh, two boxes I missed here are the nitro crates. I think. Crap. Well, that sucked. Let's try that again. By the way, that is a dick enemy placement right there. Ah, oh, crap. Now we're in complete darkness. <laughs> Thankfully, the darkness is nowhere near as bad as it was in Crash 1. So you can at least still see, even if uh, the fireflies just fly away, it's just going to be a lot harder to see. And there we go. Gem has been collected on this alternate path. And there we go. That was totally fly. Though there is still the matter of collecting the crystal that is in the stage, but we will be able to collect it at some point. As far as when, we should be able to collect it relatively soon.
then again, I think uh, that uh, gem is unique only to that location, although I could be wrong on that. Okay, let's head back up to uh, the latest warp room, which is warp room number four, and proceed onward to the next level. Although, uh, I think we were working on uh, hanging out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were working on this level. We weren't able to get the gem, but we were able to collect the crystal before heading off to the secret exit. So, we're going to have to do this level again in order to get the box gem. But trust me, it will be worth the effort. I don't even know how I missed the first spin. But whatever, at least he didn't kill me immediately. Whoa, hi. Those enemies always throw me off. Just because of the fact that they spawn in and they come charging at you. Like a bat out of hell. Ooh, gotta go fast. <laughs> go whoa fast. Also, hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, Shadow Dragon 67. Hmm, I couldn't really see that name too well due to the text color just kind of blending in. I don't know. Either way, welcome to the stream. You're just in time for me to redo this uh, particular level once again and go after the freaking box gem that's here. This is going to be a real fun journey. And we still have a ways to go. Quite a ways. This is only the first of uh, several levels that we still have to get through without dying, of course. That's the last thing we need to do. Okay, take it easy, take it slow, slow and steady wins the race. That's how the saying goes, for the most part. Of course, you do have to be fast in certain points. Now, okay, that's cool. You're free to hang out as long as you please. Mm, me either. I feel the same sort of way. Not a fan of this level either. <laughs> I've never been a fan of these sewer levels. They've always been very unkind. particular bonus stage you have to navigate your way across across a bunch of nitro crates and you also have to be sure that you have to be sure that you time your distance Time your jump just right. There we go. Alright. Almost done. Just got a little bit more to go. And then this level will finally be done. God damn it. Of course I would miss jump. I would miss time to jump and jump on the freaking rat. At just the wrong point. Like I always do. Sometimes it's just simply a better idea to ignore the enemies that are on screen and proceed. And there we go. Box gem is ours. 
now you may be wondering where the crystal is. Well, we've already collected the crystal technically in this stage. So, we don't need to worry about it. So that's good news. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. On to the next level. Which one should we do next? I think we're going to go for... Digging it. The reason... Because I have a feeling that Cold Hard Crash is going to be a really bad level. <laughs> I think that was the level I got the, got frustrated on the most. Okay. Yeah, it is. Because that level is like one of the hardest levels in the entire game to get all the frickin' boxes on. And I'll explain more about why that's the case as soon as we get there. And speaking of which, I'm probably going to save that stage for last in this war room. And the reason is because of that sheer difficulty. hate this part so freaking much because you not only have to deal with those freaking uh, piranha guys you also have to deal with the fact that they throw exploding bombs which are so pinpoint accurate that they can snipe you from across the freaking map a lot of times not only that you also have to deal with the fact that the there's so much that can go wrong here that's not even funny. By the way, I feel like this level, yeah, it does. It has one of the hardest uh, death routes in the entire game. And I swear to God, you need an Aku Aku mask in order to get through it. By the way, this is another one of those uh, weird freaking levels where... You have to time your jumps just right in order to get up to uh, get up to the high platform up there. Whatever. Three, four, five, and six. Okay. By the way, if you make it up to that high platform, you can snag some extra lives that are up there. But, you don't need to worry about that so much if uh, you're not going for them. Here's one of the reasons why this death route is so freaking difficult. Because there's a lot of uh, instances where you have to jump over great distances while also having to deal with bombs. And bees. Forget the beat. <sighs> Thankfully, this death route does have a checkpoint. So, upon reaching a certain point within the death route. Ah! Damn it! I know, I hate this level too. <laughs> uh, this is one of the worst levels in the entire freaking game. Just due to the fact that you have to make it to the death platform without dying and without getting sniped. And you wanna know what's even worse? This is a fork in the road! So, now you have to make your way all the way back around the other side of the stage. And, there's very little checkpoints in this entire section. Ugh, worse than Cold Heart Crash. I disagree. 
though it is definitely one of the worst levels in the entire game. Hmm. Favorite Crash 2 level? Hmm. Good question. Yeah, damn it. My favorite Crash 2 level? I'm not 100% sure. But I feel like, uh... I'm leaning towards one of the jet ski-like levels. Like, hang high, hang eight, something to that extent. Not 100% sure which one's my favorite. Hmm. I think one thing you could do is that if you uh, activated the checkpoint and activated the death platform, the death route platform once, and then uh, intentionally KMS and then head this way, then complete this route, start heading backwards, and then do the death route. Maybe this will be easier. Oh, God damn it. Maybe it'll be easier that way. I'm not too sure. But I feel like if you are going to go the extra mile and start heading backwards this way, you might as well do the death route again. Stupid freaking bees! Ugh. I swear to God, you need two pity masks in order to get through this back section without getting stung to death a million freaking times. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, come on! Why? Why? What the hell was that shit? Seriously, I hate these bees. Go! Go dive into a freaking lake. Seriously, screw those things. And now I'm dead. I'm completely screwed. Uh. And you want to know what's even worse? There's a lot of sections like this where you have to deal with bees that immediately appear on screen. And if you misuse the pity mask at the wrong time, you're going to die. But again, you don't know it's coming until it's almost too late. So you literally have like literal, you have like milliseconds to react. Milliseconds. And if you screw up, it's all the way back to the previous checkpoint. Or lose your pity mask. Just like a freaking doofus. Me. Okay. I'm just going to go through this again. Oh, sweet Jesus. Somehow the game was, like, trying to push me off, and I got stumped. Interesting. Unbearable is not even that bad. I feel like this level alone with Cold Heart Crash are some of the hardest levels in the entire game. And of course, there is going to be a grand champion as far as difficult levels are concerned that are gonna be go that's going to be coming up in the near future within the final warp room. I swear to God, I am not kidding. Because there's so much Frickin' crap that you need to take into account that it's not even funny. Oh God damn it! Seriously, screw them frickin' bees! Are they even bees or are they wasps? Or are they hornets? <laughs> uh. Hmm. 
I'm not too sure what you're talking about, but there, there we go. Finally, we got the freaking second pity mask already. Good, because I need it. Especially for stupid shit like that. I need it for all the bees that are in this entire freaking level. One thing you could do is just take little baby steps. When you think you're approaching a section that you know is going to contain a bee, take baby steps. Or even listen for a bee to come swarming at you. Oh, fudge me in the frickin' butthole. Sniping minefield of doom. Okay. We made it across. Now we just need to get to the next checkpoint without being freaking killed. I live. I got both of the freaking gems. Oh my god, yes. That was way too close of a call. But damn. Damn, damn, damn. <laughs> that was hell. <laughs> boy, oh boy. That was something else, I tell you. Phew. And the fun has only just begun. <laughs> Let me tell you. Okay, we got Ruin Nation as well as Cold Hard Crash left in this particular warp room. And we're at 67% completion right now. Great! I'm heading into Ruin Nation. Reason why? Is because... I want to save Cold Hard Crash for last. That is going to be considered the one of the hardest levels in the entire freaking game. Screw you, game. Screw you. Also, screw you for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, another really fun level. This is <laughs> the green. Path. The path that you can uh, take with the green gem is definitely going to be a fun path to take, that's for sure. Oh! Damn it! I hate that! I hate that so freaking much. That has thrown me off so many times when playing through this stage. That's not even funny. Seriously, I have walked off so many freaking platforms on this stage because of the whole depth perception issue that I have with this game and this entire collection in general. Okay, here we go. Time for the fun green gem route. <laughs> One thing you can definitely use to your advantage 
within the this section and dealing with the whole Donkey Kong thing is use the rumble. Use the rumble as an indication of uh, when the logs are coming. The greater the rumble, the closer the logs are going to be. that up royally. Phew. Here we go. Death route completed. Whoa. That one number nice. God damn it. You know what, I don't think uh, there were any boxes from my recollection on the death route anyway, so that was kind of pointless. Hmm, the original crash got stuck under the platform, couldn't get out. Oh, <laughs> I've actually seen that happen before when I was watching uh, people speedrun the, the original crash too. And, uh, this was like showcased in like speedrun fails as well as Glad Jonas. <laughs> and from what I've seen, that was quite uh, hilarious when it did occur. That usually if it does happen and they're soft locked. They're usually soft locked until they exit out of the stage. And then redo it all over again. Worth it. As far as this particular bonus stage is concerned, there's not really much as far as difficulty is concerned. It's just pretty tricky to get through, and honestly, it's not that bad. It really isn't. Just some careful movement is all you really need. And there we are. Bonus stage done. Just got the monkey to deal with. Oh my god. How did I live? I live. How did I miss that? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, if you're in a glad Jonas, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh. oh, wouldn't that be something? And I typically don't speedrun. I've only uh, tried speedrunning once. It was fun to do, but uh, I haven't really had the time to try doing it again since. Of course, that's a really fun box to hit. And timing the jump can be a really, really difficult endeavor. If you mistime it at any point, you're going to fall and you're going to die. There we go. Honestly, that wasn't too bad. Now it's time to begin the f most fun level in the entire game after I close my curtain and fix the frickin' uh, green screen. And that's just solely due to the sun. Bada bing. Bada boom. 
by the freaking bone. Okay. 71% complete. We're almost there, folks. We're almost at the end. However, after I finish this warp room, I'm probably going to end today's session, though. <laughs> Knowing my luck, this is probably going to take me a really long time to do. So, time for one of the hardest levels in the entire game. Cold Hard Crash. And it's solely so freaking hard if you're going after the box gems. Otherwise, it's not so bad. The reason why this is so hard is because you have to make your way through a large chunk of the level in order to reach a death platform. Then you have to do a series of sequences in order to make it so you can uh, get through the section. Not only the death section, but you also have to get through another chunk of this uh, part of the level in order to get all the boxes. And you have to do a series of sequences. God damn it. And pray to God you don't end up getting crushed or killed. So that's a lot of stuff to keep in mind throughout the entire course of this entire freaking level. There's a lot to keep in mind here. Thankfully, deaths and bonus stages don't matter. And if you die, so what? It just means you have to redo it again if you want to go after the money. Also, that was stupid of me. By the way, this is one of the most dickish box placements ever. In the original, that particular box was off screen. Thankfully, that issue was fixed in the Insane Trilogy. But, uh, there, it's not so bad. And there we go. Bonus stage is done. However, we still got a ways to go before we can, uh, reach the death platform. One thing I'm definitely going to do is... Just step on the platform, intentionally take a death. Holy crap, I almost got killed by a frickin' hedgehog. Once you step on a death platform, even if you die, even if you die within the death platform section or outside of it, so long as you have activated it at least once, then you should still be fine. Activate the checkpoint here, and it's wise just to simply take a dive. Whee! Take the dive, take the L. There's a reason for this. And again, maybe you can't go back this way up on the... Okay. Never mind. Okay. Well, this is definitely going to be a doozy to figure out for sure. Even if we don't get the gem here, I'll figure out what it is that you have to do off screen, like before the next session. Anyway, this is considered one of the hardest death routes in the entire game for a reason. As you can see, there is an outline box right there. However, there's no way to activate that until, like, towards the very end of this entire death section. And there's a lot that can go wrong in such a short period of time that it's not even funny. 
There are so many things that can kill you, and there's also some really dickish placements when it comes to nitro crates and other annoying obstacles. So having an Aku Aku mask or two throughout the entire death section is almost mandatory. God damn it! Why couldn't I slide? Why the hell couldn't I slide? What the hell was that shit about? How do I maintain so much momentum from that? No idea. Okay, let's take it easy. Wait for the hedgehog to throw his hissy fit. Then proceed. Just like that. Don't you dare throw me off now, game. Also, say hello to the, mo the most infamous box structure in the entire game. And, yeah, it's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> it could be that, or a middle finger, and that works too. Either way, it's a very annoying box structure. God damn it. And that's followed by the most uh, difficult section to... Uh, the most difficult part of the entire section, that is the Nitro Crate. God damn it. That Nitro Crate section is really, really damn difficult to get through. Just... God, I hate that momentum shit so much. Gotta deal with the hedgehog on our way back. Come on! I hit the slide button! Why didn't it activate? Yeah, it just wasn't worth continuing there. Honestly, it may not be a bad idea to just throw away all your lives until you can get up the two pity masks for this point in the frickin' uh, level. Otherwise, you may not be able to get through here very easily, or at all. I mean, it's still very well possible to get through here even without the petty masks. It still makes things a lot easier, especially if you can hold on to both masks throughout the entire Death Gauntlet, up until this point. And once you've collect, collected the uh, other, the third mask, and uh, quickly make your way through this entire section without sliding into doom. And of course, that's the whole reason why this entire gauntlet is so difficult because if you completely miss that steel crate even if you run straight into it your momentum is still carried from your previous actions there's a lot of uh, frame perfect inputs that you kind of have to do in order to make it so you hit the steel crate and you still are able to slide back in the opposite direction and still uh, head back towards the very beginning of this entire death gauntlet like, and then get through the rest of this all over again.
And once again, if you happen to fall off, you might as well just fall into this pit and die. Then redo it. It's also very well possible you can overshoot the jump and miss the gem altogether within this section. And if you miss it, you will have to redo the death section in the death route in order to get through this part all over again in order to get another shot at the gem. I swear to God, you do need at least one Aku Aku mask for that particular Nitro Crate section. There's no way to get through there without taking a hit. That's what makes this so freaking annoying, or one of the many factors that makes this the most annoying section in the entire freaking game. And trust me, things are only going to get even more intense and more extreme as we continue to make our way through here. Crap! Frickin' steel crate and uh, uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. I hate this level so frickin' much. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. to forget about a single box there. Damn it! That was stupid! Why did I do that? Wow. I am the most skilled player on the planet. God, I hate the Nitro Crates so much. They always seem to bounce when you are bouncing in the air. That is so stupid. How can the freaking Nitro Crates be that freaking unpredictable? through here and then charge no damn it man I should have slid I should have frickin' slid instead of trying to stop myself. No, I had to be stupid and just continue anyway. Oh my god, I am so stupid right now. There is no easy way to stop yourself when you're sliding on ice. Once you get going, there's pretty much no stopping you. All 
All right, let's go at this again. Here we go. Round two. Steel crate has finally been struck. We can finally start heading back this way and grab that one box that was just floating in the air. The one that has been outlined this entire time. And we can finally move on. Now we just need to get through the rest of the gauntlet without getting killed again, which is a lot easier said than done. Especially if you don't have any Aku Aku masks to cheese any nitro crates that were here previously. Whee! There we go. Finally. Finally done with that crap. Though I'm pretty sure we're getting close to the end of the level and we're still nowhere near. We still don't have anywhere near enough of the boxes. Seriously, screw this freaking level. Screw everything that it stands for. Yep. I knew it. Still missed a ton of boxes. I don't even know what you have to do in order to get all the boxes in Cold Hard Crash. I really don't. But, you know what? Screw it. I'll have to worry about that another time, because right now, right now, we're just going to go ahead and fight the next boss here and just say screw it. At least the death route is completed for now, but we will have to go through there again. Crash. I have discovered that the opposition is being masterminded by Dr. Nitrous Brio, the inventor of the Evolver Ray. Brio was responsible for our misunderstandings in the past. He forced me to assist him in his plot for world domination, and he's at it again. He will attempt to stand in our way. Be on your guard, Crash. Deliver the crystals to Engine. Huh, deliver the crystals to Engine? And yet, we have to fight him anyway, so what the hell is even the point of that? <laughs> well, anyway, time to begin the fight against Dr. Engine. <laughs> Funny name because Engine, because Engine? Like a jet engine? Get it? Anyway, Dr. Cortex said, Give the 20 crystals you collected to me. And yet, we are not going to be doing that. Unlike all the other bosses whom we fought up to this point, which were practically puzzle based, in this fight, what you have to do is throw lump of fruit at the exposed glowing parts of Dr. Engine's mechanical. Uh, creation. And funny enough, these uh, animations were not present in the original Crash Bandicoot 2. Instead, the animation didn't even exist. Wumpa Fruits were just fired out of freaking nowhere. And in order to fire the Wumpa Fruit at Engine, what you have to do is push the square button or the throw button repeatedly over and over again. The same button you would use to spin 
now you use this button to throw Wumpa Fruit at Engine. Once you take out the main cannons on the arms, this part of the fight can be a pretty difficult part of the fight. There's not a lot of opportunities to throw the Wumpa Fruit at the weak points here. But if you can land several shots at the weak point, then you're gonna be good. And that'll be great. The best opportunity to land several blows is when Engine is firing his missiles at you from the different shoulder points. But if you can still fire beforehand and still manage to hit him somehow, that's even better. Don't forget to jump every now and again when you have to. Like when Engine is firing a missile at you, for example. Here we are. Time for the last part. Ow. And there we go. Engine is done. <laughs> Mech wrecked. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, folks. That is what I'm talking about. All right. Now that that's done, we've unlocked the final warp room. Welcome to warp room number five. Ah, what is your problem, Bandicoot? I will not ask you again to bring me the crystals. Obtain the remaining five crystals, Crash, and bring them to me. Okay, well, somehow we pissed off Cortex. I mean, can you really blame him? We took out his subordinate who was supposed to collect the crystals from us, yet he acted, acted all hostile, so <laughs> we didn't really have much of a choice. We kind of had to do what we had to do. Well, anyway, that is going to conclude today's play session of Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. We are now at 74% completion, though there is still five levels left to get through, five more crystals to collect, and still got at least 11 more gems to, co to collect, I'm pretty sure. Yep, 11. 11 more to go, and then this game will be finished. Pretty much. <laughs> so if I'm lucky, we may be able to finish it within the next session, but who knows? Who knows for sure? Anyway, I'm going to call it a day here. This is General Snivy with the Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back playthrough. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you were able to attend the live stream live, thank you for attending. Next time, we're going to be finishing up this game, more than likely finish it 100% once and for all, and we will finally, finally finish up the game fully, and after that, we'll proceed onward to the next game, depending on how long it takes me to finish this game up. So once again, thank you all so much for watching, hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all next time for the end of Crash Bandicoot 2, hopefully. Thanks. Thank you all once again so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. See you all later.